All right, thanks for checking out our channel here. I'm going to do a, a video on how to wire up a um, voltage regulator on a solar panel. Uh, this particular application is going to be with the electric fence charger. It has a, uh, I think it's a 10 watt solar panel tied to it. Um, but the but the idea behind this is all the same, whether you're want to charge a battery with a big panel or small panel, and whether you got this regulator um, or some other kind, the, the idea behind is all the same. So it's not that hard. People sometimes will make it more complicated than it needs to be. Hey! <laughs> all right, so we, this uh, local customer, or sort of local customer, was in town and he brought over a couple of units for us to work on. Um, he said the fence charge itself works, but he can never keep the battery charged up. So while we're outside testing things, um, I took my voltmeter out there and we're testing the panel. And the panel on its own is running like 21.6 volts out in the sunlight, which is normal for a 12 volt plant solar panel. Open circuit voltage, it should say on the back of the panel, OCV or open circuit voltage will be like 21 give or take volts. And that's without the regulator hooked up to anything. And that's what his was reading. So we hooked it all up to this, to this uh, voltage regulator and test the output of it. And it should be right around 13 and a half, 15 to 14 and a half, somewhere in that range. And we're getting like 1.6. So like, well, that's why your battery won't stay charged because the regular is bad. So we're going to put a, a new regulator on here. Got to get a... Uh, Got to get the old one off. So, probably pretty good panel or regular but it wouldn't come on at all and or didn't do anything so now this one's going to go somewhere in here i don't know if we'll bolt it to the case or you know to this thing probably probably so we might be able to drill some holes and put a self-tapping screw through there i don't know we'll figure it out or just use some double-sided foam tape or something like that and we'll press it into there and let it sit like right there Okay, on most voltage regulators, you're going to see at least four tabs, or four terminals, sometimes six. Um, the, the, the four you're going to look at the most that you're going to use are like these ones right here. This one is a picture of a solar panel with a plus and minus. That's your input coming from your solar panel, the positive and negative. And there's a picture of your battery. So this is the wires that come out to go down to your battery. Now this third batch of them is like you want to run an external light. So during the day, this, if you hook up an external 12-volt light to this uh, deal, during the day, of course, the light's going to be off. But as soon as the um, you know, panel shuts down at night, battery kicks in to keep things running, of course. And then that light bulb will come on. So if you need to go out there and do something, you get a light bulb. But for like electric fence applications, all you're trying to do is keep the battery charged up. So, um, so that's, we're only going to use these first for these other two. I wouldn't really use them. Like what about what I like about this one too? It's a digital readout. Now these don't come on automatically when you hook up the panel and then you have to get the battery wired up to it as well and be outside and this this will show you the rate of charge as well as the voltage uh, on the battery and you can set like the threshold so if the battery falls below say 12.3 volts it will kick back in to, to charge back up. But I would say no, I wouldn't let the battery get down that low. I'd probably let it go down to about 12 and a half. And then I think this one maxes out about 14, 13, 7. Is what this will max that out. So it maintains that battery in that 13 and a half volt range. And it kind of goes into like a float mode. So it's not always trying to charge a battery all the time. So when the uh, battery falls down a little bit below that threshold that you set on there, it kicks back in and charges back up. It has like a little gauge on there, like a, like a cell phone charging gauge, you know, like um, shows it like it's charging up. It's got that on there as well. And that one it kicks in if... Um, if it's charging the battery all right so what i need to figure out is i'm going to put this panel like right here the regulator somewhere in that range and i need to make sure that these wires are going to be long enough which they are if i cut the cable tie off 
So we got a plus and a minus, you know, red and black. And I am going to cut this back, get some fresh wire. It's not all kind of corroded looking. And we're going to strip this back. And this one's even showing a little too much. We don't need that much wire exposed. Just like, just about that much. All right, so you'll need a small, like flat screwdriver or Phillips, one of the two. I think either one of them will work. And we're gonna loosen that up. And as you're loosening it up, has these little uh, terminals inside there that open up more. And that's where you're gonna shove your wire in. So we're gonna go and open, loosen up the first four, because that's the ones that we're gonna use. Now the last two I do not care about. So the first one is our positive for our solar panel, which is our red wire from the solar panel itself. So I'll shove it in there and hold it. And then we'll take the screwdriver and snug it up. Don't over tighten it, just make it nice and snug. And the negative from the solar panel goes to the second one. Let's make sure you when you're now that your regular made it look different than this one, but the idea behind all of them is the same. Maybe you may have a digital readout one, you may not. I don't know. So that's that part's done. So now I'm gonna go get some wire so we can, that we can hook on for a battery. I got this black and red wire. So we're gonna strip that back. And the gauge wire, not real critical because not a whole lot of amp draw and this sort of stuff. So like what we got, we've got 14 gauge wire right here. This might be even a little too big find out here in a second but you know 16 14 gauge wire works fine for this sort of stuff it doesn't have to be 12 gauge or 10 gauge wire I mean you're not dealing with high amperage stuff now the next one's for a battery plus or minus so red one for the battery is going to go right in here we'll shove it in there and we'll hold it and we'll tighten it up And like this has USB stuff, but unless you're using it like at a campsite, maybe you want to charge your cell phone or tablet or whatever off your inverter with a 12 volt inverter deal. There's a negative in there now. So this is basically all done and wired up. So now I'm going to figure out a way to mount this. So there's like what we're going to do, we're either going to I mean, I could even put it up. I can put it down here like this one is. Or I could put it up here, you know, up, up, up top of the solar panel itself. But probably just put it down here. We'll see if we can... See if I got a screw. Well, I'll, I'll take care of that on by myself I'm gonna see what we want to do but that's basically it how, how to wire one of these regulars up they're real simple I mean you got the solar panel wires coming out of the panel itself it's got a red and a black plus and minus you make sure you put that into the red positive black negative make sure you look for the solar panel symbol and the next ones are your battery symbol plus and minus so you know red and black go to your positive and negative and just uh, like I said it's just little screw down terminals not real hard to hard to do The only thing I would suggest is make sure you get the right size solar panel because I mean, there's a 50 different sizes of them out there and they're all rated in wattage so you need to make sure you get the right um, solar panel for what draw you've got, what fence charger you've got, um, 
for stuff and you want to look at the whatever the store jewels of a unit is don't look at the output jewels of a unit because output jewels is what's already out not what's being drawn from the inside to the capacitor and the board so which is your store jewels that's where you want to base your um wattage off of a little bit in that on that sort of thing um I mean, just take your time. It's not hard. It's just you need a few tools and some wire and maybe some clamps to clamp onto your battery, and that's it. So, if you got any questions, you're welcome to ask in the comments area, or give me a call, or shoot me a text, or whatever. But until next time, see you guys later on, and have a good day.